your life is an institution. Every man or every woman that comes into your life, you should pick the person not for you, but for the, the institution that you represent. Every man is an institution. When you want to admit someone as a friend, admit someone as a wife, admit someone as a husband, you will not admit the person based on you, you are admitting the person based on the institution that you carry. Are you getting me? So, the clique of friends that you have at the moment are the people you have hired at the moment. And if care is not taken, most times people marry from amongst his or her friends. So if you have mediocre friend, you are going to pick from the mediocrity and have a mediocre husband or a mediocre wife. So we must understand that marriage is a senior, serious business. Anybody can be your friend but not anybody can be your wife or husband. Wives are not picked amongst friends. Wives are selected amongst friends. Husbands are not picked. Husbands are selected. Employment has a lot to do with selection, not picking. Most times when it comes to picking, you are not given option. But when it comes to selection, you are given variations of things and then you have the option to check this, check that, and then you select what you want. The greatest opportunity God has given to man is to select a wife for himself. He called it he that Find a wife. To find a wife means is that you are going to come into the multitude of wives or people that have the capacity to be your wife and then from amongst them, you will now select the person that will be your wife. And when you select the person that will be your wife, just as it is for the women, it is for the men. You have the opportunity as a woman also to select the man that will be your husband. The guy who is showing up before you now is not your last option. I need to let women know. Because sometimes women operate from disadvantaged position. They feel that ah, you are not happy that a man even spoke to you. No! You are also meant to select. That's why you are free to say no to the first, six, second, the third, and choose the fifth. It's an opportunity God gave to Every one of us. So it is usually difficult to make such selection amongst many if you don't know how to do it. Because in selection, you must be sure of what you want uh, to know what you don't want. I'm painting a picture. In my picture, we have five guys here. We have five ladies here. This is a young man who wants to marry from amongst these five. This is a young lady who wants to marry from among these five. So I want to bring you to the point where you know that there is no time that you don't have an option. Don't let anybody deceive you. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big or how small you are. Have you, have you noticed? Have you noticed that opposite attracts? Have you noticed that very tall guys usually look for Humble women. <laughs> and have you noticed that very short guys <laughs> always want to go to the mountain? Do, do you get what I'm saying? Now, if you, if you look at these people, this is a guy who wants to marry from here. If you ask this young man, who he may want to marry from amongst these people. You will be shocked at 
his criteria upon which he will base his selection. If you ask her, who do you want to marry from among these people? You will be shocked at his own criteria upon which he, she will want to marry from among these men. Do you want us to sample this opinion? Just listen, because if you understand this picture, if you understand this picture, you will marry right. Are, are you getting me? But I, I hope both of you don't mind. Very good. Okay, so be quiet. You can't come out, you can't do anything. Just listen and watch this picture. Sincerely, just tell us, the church, if you are to pick from among these men, who would you pick? Yeah. Now, stand here. <laughs> Praise God. L let me tell you, this is what all of us do. Okay, let me leave, leave, leave him. Stand there. If you were to pick from among these ladies, go and show me who to, you will pick. Okay. Back again. Now. 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 <laughs> now. Listen now. We are, we are talking. This is where the mistake of marriage is made. This is where the mistake of marriage is made. Let me tell you something. If you were to pick from amongst these guys, and you are going to pick right, it would have been better for you to tell me that I need time to know them. First, I need time to know them. And when you come to the knowing of them, it depends on what you want to know. Because you might come in terms of knowing them and suddenly notice that this young man is born from a family of two, him and the sister. And their father is a permanent secretary with ministry of foreign affairs. That is one of the profiles he's appearing with. Uh, uh, and then this is also an only son to a politician. Uh, that is one of the things you will also know. Uh, this man just graduated from Bible school. The father is a pastor. Uh, that is his own profile. Uh, and we have a person who is believing God to wax his album, a, a Christian musician. Uh, we have another person who is an accountant in, in a particular company. So I am saying that to say that when we say we want to know them, these are the things that we want to know. We'll start profiling them immediately. And when we profile them, we will begin to categorize them based on comfort. And suddenly we say, Kai, this one working as an accountant, a head accountant, they measure, they measure yam. Uh, this one that is a, a musician, which kind of music is that one? Before you get like, uh, uh, what do you, Eben, uh, I mean, when, when would that be? Uh, this one that is a, a pastor, <laughs> the way churches are moving these days, <laughs> people even hate churches and hate pastors. Do you, are you sure he will make it? Uh, 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 this one that the father is a politician, <laughs> At least when the father wins this election, now I know where I will be. This one that the father is a permanent second, the only um, son of the house. At least I am sure of what my children will be. First criteria. Second, which may be the first for some, is that, oh, I like his height. I want my children to be tall. True or false? That is where the mistake of marriage is made. That is where the mistake of marriage is made. Now, let me take you to how to remember that these people are people vacancy waiting for employment here. This is also vacancy waiting for employment here. Because either way, both are advertising. There is no man that will impose himself on you. 
Any man that comes to you is looking for employment with you. Any woman that comes to you is looking for employment with you also. So you have the choice to say, I cannot employ you. I cannot have you in my life. Reason is because I am the one that has the prerogative to choose who works with me. Remember, when companies are choosing among these people, companies are choosing to train and retrain with time. Companies choose the best and they have internal training program and external training courses to enhance the movement and progression of the company. But remember, in marriage, when you come in, one, you have chosen mediocre, two, there is no internal training. No form of internal training and you have chosen a mediocre. And you expect a mediocre to suddenly, a lizard to suddenly turn uh, to alligator, from alligator to Koroko die. It is not possible. Now, having said this to you, let me give you the basis upon which you have to choose your life partner. When God created Adam, what was the first thing God gave Adam? Huh? Say it loud. Walk. God gave Adam work. Work was what first in Niger- um, God gave to man. And then God now, first of all, exposed Adam to look for a partner amongst the animals. And Adam noticed that he could not find someone who could help him tend the garden among the animals. And that is the point that the man was seen in the eyes of God as being alone. And God needed to make him a help meet. I think Living Bible NIV said a help that is suitable. Another word for suitable is that fits. Remember, what fits you may not fit me. If I pull this cloth and give to some of you, it would take loosening it from the side for you to wear. And for some of you, if you wear it, it will look like the captain of a reverend father. Because it will cover your leg. Why? What suits me will not fit you. What fits me will not fit you. Many men and women are wearing oversized or undersized husbands. Because the choice that is displayed on this pulpit, some of them are oversized choices. You just saw the son of a permanent secretary that is an only son (laughs) with another girl. And everything about them looks very colorful. And suddenly you said, that is the person I want to get married to. Because primarily in your head, you want this soul to run away from poverty. But you don't know that that soul has been given an assignment on earth. And that when you want to make selection, you don't make selection based on you. You make selection based on the assignment that you carry. No board member will employ anybody based on him. They employ for the company. So they employ so that the work will move forward. Most of you have married queen, have married handsome men, but you don't have a handsome life. Beautiful women, but your life has been stagnant. The only thing you get is the compliment that your wife is beautiful. But any time it is said, it's a reminder of the pain and the sorrow you go through. So now, how do we employ, how do we hire who stays with us as a life partner? The first way to hire someone is for you the hirer to know what your assignment here is. Unfortunately, most people don't get to know their assignment until they are already in marriage. And unfortunately, they have hired the wrong person for the assignment. So they will have an anti-assignment partner. Now, these are the people if Tony Elumelu from child, knew that he was going to be a bank MD. 
if he wants to marry, who do you think he will marry? He will never marry a housewife. He will look for somebody who somehow or the other will help his being bank MD. So, he is not trying to look for a woman who is beautiful, even though beauty is not bad, but I'm saying that that will not be his primary concern to look for a beautiful woman. His primary concern will be to look for somebody that will enhance his being an MD in a bank. So if a farmer, assuming this is a man, a farmer wants to marry a woman, you don't go and marry a psychedelic woman as a wife, whereas you're a farmer. Because if you marry a psychedelic woman, whereas you're a farmer, she can't even live in the farm. If you go to the UK, go to the US, you will see that most farmers live in their farm. You will see an environment where farmers live. And you will see hectares of land with one bungalow somewhere by the corner. You see the bungalow there. The man is living there with the family. And the wife and children, they are all part of that farming. And the child at the age of 15 is already controlling a tractor. The wife is the one in charge of this, in charge of that. If that woman was a psychedelic kind of woman who is conscious of skyscrapers, who doesn't want to be in a bungalow like skyscrapers, likes to visit Dubai, likes to visit Paris, he will be the wrongest person to marry uh, in the scheme of things, put the other picture, in the scheme of things, in the life of a farmer. And then if J.J. Okocha wants to marry a woman, J.J. Okocha knows that football is his career and will give him any and everything that he needs in life. What the kind of woman J.J. will need is a housewife. Somebody that is cool-headed. Somebody that knows that my husband is always outside. Somebody that can rear, control, organize my family because I am not always around. So it will also be evil for JJ to leave a homely girl to marry that will make up for his absence and go and marry another woman who is a journalist. JJ, footballer, wife, football analyst. So as soon as JJ is moving, she's moving with paper. <laughs> and then the children is they're in the hands of the house help. So, no matter how much JJ loves a psychedelic chick, JJ will always sacrifice the psychedelism, which is his lust, to his calling, which is football. Now, Peter B wants to marry, but if you look at this man also, what I'm saying, can't you see it in their wives? Peter will be in his nature as a governor, in his nature as a politician, in his nature as a, in so-called uh, stinginess. He married a wife that fits. He married a wife that doesn't care about outsiders. We got to know the wife in this presidential election. White that fits where we are going to. We used to have a governor that he handed over also married a wife. <laughs> do, do, do you understand what I'm saying now? Maybe because he's vertically challenged, he married a wife that can be seen. You know, your wife. <laughs> and then you, you are seeing what is happening around it. But this one reigned for eight years and we didn't see the wife. Did it depreciate the value of the wife? But not every woman will agree. Some women will say, no, I cannot marry a politician and not be known. And not be, no, it cannot happen. No. Wrong match. So, to hire a husband or hire a wife, you have to first of all know your assignment. It is impossible to marry right without knowing what you are called to do. Because if you know what you are called to do, you will know who will help you do it. Is somebody getting me? What you are called to do determines who you marry. Adam was a vine dresser. I married Eve. How did they finally fall? From the garden. That's how they finally fell. 
So you don't marry somebody who is anti your calling, anti what you are called to do. That's why we have companies that are progressing and families that are dying. Meanwhile, it's part of the dying family that is progressing the company. My envy's wife, they are no longer together. My manager's wife, they are no longer together. My admin's wife, they are no longer together. My this wife, they are no longer together. But in the office, the office is rising. Mismatch. Say mismatch. That's what is happening here. If you must marry this man, before he sits on the floor, you're already sitting with him. You will enjoy eating food on the floor. Because that is the only thing that will make him feel that you are part of his work. Anytime you come into the farm with this man and you're working like this, ouch, ouch. That's the day problem is introduced. He will feel slighted. He will feel that this, you're out, ouch, but you eat what the proceeds of this farm. And then fight will start. Any time the wife of this man wants also climb and become an MD like he is, what will happen? Fight will break out in the family. The same thing with JJ. Say your name has been heard, your name everywhere, everywhere, and nobody hears me. How many of you know the wife of JJ? None of us. How many of you know the wife of Kanu Wankwa? None of us. These people have wives. And you see them consistently maintaining a, almost a perfect union with their wives. That when you look at them and their wives, you are like, Kai. What a perfect match. They knew their career. That's why the Bible says that the children of this world, in their world, they are wiser than the children of the kingdom. You see a child of God who wants to select, hire a wife. He's hiring based on sentiment. I like Sister Grace. I like Sister Grace. The way you used to sing. When you are not a song producer. The way you used to sing. Once you sing like this, eh? There's something in my body within me. Jiggy, 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 jiggy. <laughs> Are you a song producer? Enjoy the ministry of Sister Grace, but marry somebody that will help your assignment. Because when Sister Grace comes into your house, he will not sing forever. There are things he will do that will take her time more than the song. Song may be 10, 15, 20 minutes, but we have 24 hours in a day. So after 20 minutes of entertainment with that song, what else can she do for you? So be careful how you hire who you marry. Sentiment must not be there. Hey, can these five women come back again? There's that five women that left here. Let me show you something. Sentiment must not be part of it. Kai, I don't know why is this lady that will come first. <laughs> Always. She's not sitting in a preferred position. No. She will always come first. But I want to show you something. I want to still paint the picture on how we make mistakes in hiring our wives and husbands. Permit, and, uh, uh, permit my word. Still stand here. Stand here. Permit my word for using the word hiring. But we need to understand this because you have to have a business perspective to life in order to succeed in life. My dear, come closer. What's your name? Kokome. Kokome. Kosfini words kokume. Does it fit? <laughs> What's your name? Faith Pioko. Kosfini words faith. Does it fit? <laughs> What's your name? Neamaka. Ne Neamaka. Kosfini words in ne. Does it fit? <laughs> What's your name? Jessica. Kosfini words Jessica. Does it fit? Because Finney words took my does it fit? Yes. Now, sincerely speaking, where did it fit the more? Yes. Ne. Oh, they already know your name. <laughs> now, most of us marry who fits us, not who fits our destiny. Yes. That 
that's exactly what is happening. Look well, the person you want to marry, what does he fit in your life? Destiny or you? We wear fitted women unfitted in destiny. Women that fit our life, men that fit our life, they both look good together. They both look good together. What you are seeing is walking in the street with her, with your hands closed together, and then you are walking together, and everybody's looking at you and say, Can you see this couple? Can you see this couple? That's exactly what most of us marry. Walking together in the public is less than one hour of your life. You know another thing? Most of us also marry their profession. You see a woman that you know is good and it fits into destiny. You ask, what is this story? Say, mask on. <laughs> what did the mask on do? The other one, I'm called doctor. My friend, go to doctor. <laughs> Boom, you carry doctor. And you become a permanent patient. <laughs> permanent patient. Because she will, she will treat you. Bros, she go treat you. You go receive boto boto. That's exactly the mistakes we make in marriage. So if I want to marry from among these people and you're sincere to yourself, first of all, know your assignment. I am a pastor. Because people who hire people in company have the option of firing them. Remember in this hiring, option of firing is very slim. Not only is it slim, when you fire somebody in the company, you hire a better person. But when you fire somebody in marriage, you hire a worse person. Why? Because in the company, emotion is not involved. In the family, emotion is involved. And once your emotion is colored, you are likely to hire worse. That's the problem we're seeing here. You go, boom, you carry. Oh boy, I saw that girl with you. Oh boy, two of you, eh? Two of you, eh? Hey! I'm already seeing where they gun and sit. <laughs> what you are seeing is coughing. You're seeing coughing. So be very careful. Men get to know what you are here for. Get to know what you are here for. Pastor, I have somebody who is coming for my hand in marriage. Uh, but, but, is a Yahoo boy, you. What are you? Uh, you know, I'm in choir and I have, I want to produce my song. And then he's a Yahoo boy. <laughs> my day, if you're a Yahoo boy, because coming, make sure you're a Yahoo girl. Because you are coming into his life to help his assignment. So if Yahoo is his assignment, you will help it. When he's sitting work for the Oyibo, you will smooth in it. If the Oyibo woman hears your voice, immediately you pick phone and say, Kai, my brother has been telling me about you. You are so lucky to meet my brother. In fact, I wish two of you were. Why? You are a help meet. You are a help meet. That's your work. Whenever you refuse to help, you are in trouble. And you don't come to complain that rubbish for me. You didn't marry under Durex. Not on that gunpoint. Huh? You know, Pastor, that time I was not really the way I am today. No, you were. It's just that you had lost. Lost. And some of you wedded breast. What you wedded is not human. You wedded breast. That is your area of concentration. That is your calling. Once you see them in their, in their, in their magnificence, your head loses control. So, you propose immediately because you don't want another person to carry it. And then, when you get into the marriage, the thing that you hired, because after a time, every breast will become humble. They become humble. And when they become humble, you being a very lustful person, you are still seeing that arrogant one before. 
and it's no longer where you left it. So you start looking at it in people, in people, in people, until you end up in the grave. Because that's, that's, the, that's the way to the grave. Read Proverbs now. The same thing with women. You guys can go. The same thing with women. You want to hire a man for life. You are looking for his pocket. Did I say pocket is not good? No. Pocket is good, but potential is better. Pocket is good. Potential is better. You're looking for a man to hire. And the man is coming with a, 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 one clean Mercedes C-Class to 2020. And the light, everything is blue. We know everything. And he jumps out. The smell from the car alone is, is, is able to do something. And another one is coming. With one small car. Just like my time. I was driving a golf. At a point, I don't park the golf in a flat round, ground. I park it in a sloppy place. Because uh -huh, when my wife escorts me, come to the car, I will start it if he doesn't respond. He said, is it not started? I said, don't worry. I just neutralize the car and roll it. And in rolling, you put it in gear two. Put ignition on, the car will pick. You will start going. Am I still in golf? No. Women, let your eyes be open. Let your eyes be open. The world of fast food has corrupted the minds of people. If it has to be ready now. It has to be ready now. Things that are ready now finishes now. Potential trains your character. When you watch the man grow from one level to another, from one level to another, you guys will grow and stay grown. But if you look for an already made, you'll become a piece of wood in his house. Say, are you not happy that I, I, I brought you from Africa to Germany? Are you not happy that I, I brought you from the village to America? That's what you'll be hearing. Because you are not contributing. You didn't contribute into the assignment of his life. So be very careful. Let me round up. So if you desire to be a hunter, your pet should not be a chihuahua dog. Your pet should be a crazy rottweiler if you want to be a hunter. So if you want to be a hunter in the realm of the spirit, that's your assignment. Don't marry a chihuahua as a wife. Marry a Rottweiler. Chihuahua is petty. Chihuahua is loving. But Chihuahua can't protect, can't do the assignment you brought the dog for. A Rottweiler may be aggressive, but he will wall off enemies. Rottweiler can die for you fighting to lion that he knows can swallow him. You know they fear. You have <laughs> and the lion will kill. Because the lion kills the rot, you have at least gone far. But if you marry a chihuahua, once the lion smells, eh, chihuahua will jump into your hand. <laughs> then you will carry the chihuahua. Lion will <laughs> fix on two of you. So be very careful. If you're a doctor and you want to buy a car, You should know the kind of car you want to buy. As a doctor, your car should be a utility vehicle, not a luxurious vehicle. Utility vehicle. An average vehicle. As a doctor, especially when you're just starting life. If you're a farmer and you want to buy a car, it can't be luxurious. It must be truck. Tundra. Takuma. Helux. You're a farmer. So when I buy as a pastor a Lexus, you don't join me to buy Lexus because Lexus looks good. It looks good on you, but doesn't look, look good on your career. What will happen is that you will drive the Lexus and everybody say, this farmer is rich, so he has Lexus. But anytime you want to move your products from the farm, you go and hire a truck. So you are wasting. Some people have wives, but they are paying for wife.
You have a wife, you're paying for wife. Because you have a cook. Because you have a dry cleaner. Because you have a normal cleaner. Because you have a um, caregiver in the house. Because you have everything. Why? You married a fashionista. A beauty pageant lady. But didn't marry a wife. So, anything that marriage didn't give you, expenses will make up for it. I say it again. Anything you cannot get in your wife, you will spend to make up for it. If you're a politician and you want to buy a car, you are likely going to buy a luxurious car. Reason is because politicians want to show off. Is it showing off that they gain their position? If I want to get into the policies and suddenly I go and buy healers, clean healers, and this, use this my car behind, and I want to go to Enugu and tell my uh, governor that I want to get into the politics. Once he sees a healers with borrowed, two borrowed policemen, <laughs> eh? he, he will know that I'm ready. Am I really ready? No. But I have to behave like them. So when you see a politician, that's why when they leave office, they sell everything they made in, in seconds. Because he was borrowed head of Acts. Remember, second kings, or first king. Eh? Behold, it was borrowed. Then if you're a native doctor and you want to marry a lady, you know you cannot marry a township girl because native doctors of the dead, not these deceivers now, the real native doctors of them marry core village girl who understand traditions, who understand culture, who knows that there is a time in the life of native doctor that you don't cook with oil for him. That there is a time that he doesn't want to see you. That any time you enter into your flow, you hide yourself naturally. When he calls you two, three times and you don't show up, he knows what is happening to you at the moment. Not the one that will say, what nonsense is this? Did you marry me here so that I cannot be indoors? I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And you know you are flowing. You show up. His child will kill you. <laughs> Straight up. Because they don't have mercy. It's in this environment that mercy speaks. For them, mercy don't speak. If you break the hedge, immediately the snake will bite. Or oh, native doctor marrying a girl with her, you know. <laughs> so, you, you, for what? Have you finished getting into the bush to get grasses? And chop them the way you should chop them and put them before a fire? For the smoke to chase out and attract evil? Because as it's chasing out some evil, it's attracting evil. Praise God. So why would a Christian want to marry and not consider his purpose? When other unbelievers want to marry and they consider their purpose. Why wouldn't a Christian want to marry and consider his purpose? Young man, I'm asking you. Why would you want to marry and your purpose is not in view? If you don't know your purpose, try and know it. Because the things we call very important things when we want to select a wife, we got into marriage and noticed that they are not as much important. They are not as much as important as we thought. So you saw these things that are moving you now. After six months, three months, six months is fine, three months in marriage, they won't move you again. Hey, what keeps a man around you is your character of is not in your style. Is your character. You see that style? There are people that will give it to him. Good measure. Press down. There are people that will give it to him. Such a style. It's character. So that the man, when he sits there, look at you and your madness, he weighs your character. And weigh the character of the fool outside. <laughs> Say that. Let me be with uh, the one I know. Then if you look at the Bible, we saw how Jesus chose his own wife. I hope you know Jesus got married. 
Jesus got married to 12 people. The 12 disciples. And let me tell you, that 12 disciples is one. 12 disciples, they are one. One is that they are the beginning of the body of Christ. We are still the wives and the brides of Christ, isn't it? So we are also one. It's one body. Okay? So Jesus married one wife with 12 manifestations. And each manifestation of the wife of Christ is the representation of character of women. But the good thing about it is that all of them helped him in achieving his purpose on earth. Peter, according to the Bible history, was 18 years older than Jesus. So Jesus married a wife that was older than him. He wasn't looking at age, he was looking at purpose. Why we have issues when we marry somebody that is older than us like that is that we don't marry according to purpose. We're married according to maybe money. The girl is advantaged at the moment. And you as a leech want to just suck. But when you now come in, the girl also knows why you came. You just close the valve. You start flying like a, 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 a witch that, is, that got into morning suddenly. So, he never picked any of them on the basis of their tribe. So, tribe is nothing in the scheme of marriage. I must marry Yoruba. I must marry Aousa. I must marry Igbo. I must marry from my village. It does not in any way indicate success. Christ married not considering their tribes. How do I know? He didn't ask Peter, where are you from, when he approached him. Neither he didn't have James, Bartholomew, and the rest of them. Again, Christ also picked did not, never picked any of them because of their looks. Because of their looks. Looking, is it bad? No, but it should not be primary in choosing a life partner. The looks of the person in tandem with your purpose is better than the looks of the person as it relates to you. Jesus also never picked any of them because of their sexual capacity, which is the way we pick these days. Pastor, how can I marry a person that I don't even know his uh, destiny? What if I marry him now and he doesn't know how to do? What if I, is your purpose doing? Are you people opening a brother? If that is your purpose, it's okay. But if it's not your purpose, sister, <laughs> brother, Immediately you enter into that place, trust is broken for life. Go and ask, they will tell you. No man, no woman that has ever slept with a partner before marriage, that marriage lacks trust. It may not be pronounced, but it exists. God bless you, dear. I'm telling us. So, I want to know if we are sexually compatible. Something is wrong with your head. Because there is nothing like sexual compatibility. It doesn't exist. It's, it's not a measurement. It's not a criteria. Because sexual compatibility comes as a result of sexual perversion. That's why God recommends we marry as virgins. Because if you marry as a virgin, what you do with your wife at the moment becomes compatibility for the both of you. But if you have, if you have wallowed, wallowed, you have moved from Peter to Paul, from Chooks to Chica, from Chica to, you have moved. And you have jumped from Chinasa to Chicos here, from Chicos here to uh, every, you have moved. That's why you are looking for sexual compatibility. Because you have, you have corrupt, you, your mind is twisted. So you are not looking for sexual compatibility, you are looking for lust, fulfillment of lust. So Jesus never chose like that, and yet he didn't fail in his marriage. And he never married because he, 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 he never picked any of them because he wanted to showcase them to the world. I want to marry so that when I appear in my village and people see my husband or see my wife, they will know that I'm the one that married the most beautiful. Finally, you will die of hyper hypertension because as soon as he, she leaves the house or he leaves the house, you, you, you almost are driving, devising a method to mount a tracker. So you'll be knowing where she's going. Reason is because she's so beautiful 
that you cannot let her move without your eyes following her. Yes, you are in church, but your eyes are still going, even though he's sitting behind you. He's sitting behind you. She's sitting behind you. Sometimes you will laugh. <laughs> and, you, and you know you're not looking back because of the laughter. You're looking back to monitor. He's still there. Who is he looking at? So did you marry wife? You married bondage. He never picked based on sentiment. No company will employ your sentiment. I said, I like this girl. The way he behaves. I look the face. Ah, it looks like that. My, my girlfriend when I was 18. No company will employ you that lot. Before you come, you present your CV. They will look at it. You can be very beautiful. And then you lose the job. They don't pick based on emotion. How did Christ pick the wife? He picked people who were ready to leave everything to follow him. When he approached Peter, James, and John, they left everything, including Bartholomew and Matthew, who were people that were handy with a better profession. About the, apart from the average profession, which was fishing at the time, these people were accountants, tax collectors, doctor. They left it. So, when you want to marry, you marry a woman that can leave everything and follow. Everything. Leaving everything and following is not abandoning your medical profession and following or law and following or journalism and following or choir and following. But someone who can sacrifice whatever it is that is at stake just to build that which God has called you to build. That's the person he followed. They picked those who could kill for them. Jesus picked wife that can kill. In several locations, disciples have said, Master, should we fight? When was the last time your wife or your husband said that as against the things that are coming against you? You're already quarreling with your neighbor. And your husband is saying, ah, oh boy, we say this one go beat and wear. You had issues on the road and a fight broke out. Your husband is already out trying to fight. Instead of coming in between to say, don't try it. If you dare talk to my husband like that because you know the man can't beat you. He said, honey, teach him a lesson. And you, are knowing, you know that this, there's no comparison. And honey, will she please sleep? <laughs> try his luck. And then you'll be the one to drive him home. Because his hand would have been like <laughs> On the teaching blessing, his son is like this. He's coming home. So Jesus married someone who could fight, even at the point of arrest, with military Roman soldiers, gallant Roman soldiers. Peter pulled out, boom, struck, cut off the ears of a servant of that man that came to point at them. And Jesus said, hey, enough. It's okay. The time has come. So that's the kind of person you will marry. Check when the... <laughs> when it gets tough, what is that woman or that man ready to do for you? Or willing to do for you? They will go all out for his purpose. He picked men who stayed with him to the end. Stayed with him to the end. Not fair weather wife, fair weather husband. When he was moving well, he was a politician doing well. The wife was with him. Immediately they took away the office. He's no longer the commissioner. The wife is already dating the current commissioner. He picked people who never questioned the authenticity of his purpose. Christ was talking about his purpose and the disciples were already waiting. When will this kingdom, when will this kingdom? None was saying, when will you create my own kingdom? When will this your kingdom come? Master, tell us. When will this thing be? So you need to marry somebody who believes in what you preach. Who believes in what you preach? Who believes in where you're going to? Managing the disciples was easy for him because he selected the best in the job. 
It is easier to manage someone who is in line with your purpose. But you know, the one who is not in line with your purpose, you can't manage the person. It's all the struggle back and forth with your partner, back and forth with your partner, something is wrong. There's a wrong selection somewhere. When you select right, you manage less. When you select wrong, you will become a manager for life. You become a manager for life. Let me also tell the married people. Companies send their workers to courses. Jesus had the time to take their disciples to a solitary place to speak to them. After speaking confusion to the crowd, he takes them aside and explains the parable. Training. How much of a training do you give to your partner? People who are trained rain. The more you train, the more they rain. But once you stop training, the person starts dying. And nothing dies in you without you feeling it. Look at the picture of the five ladies and the five guys who came up here. I sampled only two guys. And the two of them pointed at one, one mistake. You know why? Not because she's bad, but they all wanted her for her looks. But you know what? Few years down the line, all of them will finally get married. And you will see from where peace will be coming. The unlikely places. He's driving a Corolla 2000 model with the husband. You are driving a G-Wagon with your husband. But any time the two couples meet, you will see peace resident in the poor. And you will see tension in G-Wagon. Didn't you see the video that trended? A woman who came out of the car in a safari to yell at the husband and the leopard came out of the safari and ate her up. They are driving in a wild. We have such wilds in places. It's in India. It's in somewhere in uh, South Africa. It's in um, Kenya. It's in the West. Dedicated place. A woman, because of quarrel with the husband, came out from the car and came to the husband's side. And the husband opened the door, probably to say, we are in a bad place. Before the husband could say, Jack, a leopard came from behind, grabbed her here, and dragged her. Even though the forest guards were there and immediately they drove towards them. But let me tell you, one bite from a leopard, eh? your spine will be crushed. Go and study their jaws. Their jaws is ten times stronger than the jaw of a Rottweiler, dog. So once he hits that thing, holds it, you will shoot it to die. But you will have to open the mouth like Samson to release that thing. And that lady will bleed to death. Why? That was a lady married by a man. Who couldn't wait until they get home to quarrel? Who feels that the car is too small for her to quarrel inside? Who didn't consider the danger of the environment of quarrel? Lost her life for nothing. What is happening between you and your spouse? How are you dragging it? Where are you taking it to? Some of you may not have been eaten by leopard, but the people you are gisting with are leopards. They are eating you up. Bow your heads and let's pray.